Now, here's a great story. There's this guy who goes about his everyday job, his everyday job as a teacher. He's a teacher in Wembley. And uh, what's happened, it didn't stop there because luckily he then got a chance to star or, or land his dream role with Harrison Ford in the new Indiana Jones film, which has just been released at the weekend. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? Same for the goddaughter. Dad told me you found something on a train during the war. A dial that could change the course of history. Why are you chasing the thing that drove your father crazy? Don't move. I need to get out of here. Stop! Sorry. Helena! Dr. Jones, get him. Well, alongside Harrison Ford and Phoebe Waller-Bridge is Mohammed Kamel. What do you mean you've never heard of him? <laughs> well, you've heard of him if you're one of his pupils. He teaches English and he acts in his spare time. Yes, you might have also spotted him in The Crown pretty recently. And he is now to play a villain. And I'm pleased to say Mohammed joins us in the studio this morning. This is an extraordinary story. So you're not even a professional actor. You just do this as a hobby on the side. And what, you got spotted from The Crown and parachuted in, if you pardon the, the pun, into Indiana Jones. That's right. It was just a, a very surreal experience. This doesn't um, happen in real life. <laughs> Apparently not, but, um, I mean, it's my dream come true, and it happened to me, and uh, if it could happen to me, it could happen to anyone. It was just extraordinary. I think what happened was there was a casting director in London working for Nina Gold's office, a very famous casting director in London, and she cast me in the role of Ali Al-Fayed in The Crown. Oh. Next thing I knew, my agent got a call saying, do you remember that casting director who put you in The Crown? I was like, yes. Well, there's a secret project that she wants you to audition for. Just film yourself on your camera phone yeah. doing the lines that they send you. And I was like, what's the project? And even my agent didn't know. She's, I don't know. But just do what they say. I was like, OK. They sent me an email saying, uh, you have to sign an NDA before you even see the lines. Non-disclosure agreement. That's right. I couldn't even see the lines to audition mm -hmm. before I signed the NDA. Signed the NDA. Next day, an email comes over saying, oh, we've got your, your NDA. Now you can see what lines we want you to audition for. But they weren't even sent. They sent a website, a secret website, with a password that expires after 24 hours. What? A bit like Mission Impossible. You know, when they say this message will yes. self-destruct in five seconds. So I thought, oh, my God, I better get myself off to that website, enter the password, got in there, quickly wrote down the dialogue that I had to learn before the website expires, and then f taped myself on my camera phone doing the audition. Can you remember the lines? Uh, I can remember some of them, Give yeah. us a flavour. <laughs> I'll give you a flavour, OK. The boss says, you stay. That's one of the lines. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But I had to do some other lines in French, Arabic and English. Uh -huh. Did um, you worry at all or were you offended at all that they were basically looking for someone that looked thuggish? <laughs> <laughs> A villain. <laughs> not at all, not at all. I mean, they say that the word typecast includes the word cast. So you're getting cast, you're getting roles, uh -huh. you know. I, I'm not offended at all, no. I, I know that I'm a character actor, you know. So. How long did it take them to tell you you would got the job? The next day. Right. I mean, that's what shocked me. Because for The Crown, it was a very elongated process. I had to do a self-tape audition, I had to do an in-person audition, another in-person audition, it was very rigorous. And I kind of thought I would never get this part. And in the end, I got it. Mm. But with Indiana Jones, it was like the next day, yeah, you've got the part. What's the part? We don't know. Oh. <laughs> and Mohammed, right. what was it like working alongside your hero, Harrison Ford, and indeed my hero, Phoebe Waller-Bridge? I mean, that must have been... You were up close with them all the time. Yeah, I... Actually, it's very hard to answer that question because up to now, I'm still pinching myself yeah. that this whole thing happened. And I can't... I can't sort of describe in words what it's like. They say don't meet your heroes, right? Yes, yeah. But with Harrison Ford, you can meet your heroes. I mean, he's just so lovely. He's incredible. I used to get there in the morning, he would come in with an orange, and he'd see me standing there, and he'd peel the orange, and always take out a piece and say, do you want a piece, oh. Mohammed? And I'd be like, no thanks. Because I was worried about, I didn't want to upset my stomach before <laughs> filming, you know? But even though I said no every morning, every morning he would still offer me the orange. Yes. I mean, just such a lovely guy. Incredible. But you see, they've used on him in the first 15 minutes or so of the yeah. film, uh, something scientific which is called a de-aging process. That's right, yeah. So it's like a filter. 
yes. that makes them look younger because they're going back in time in the, um, in the story. Mm -hmm. um, but the man is in his 80s, as I understand. That's right, yeah. He's, he's fit looking, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's, he's fit. He doesn't look 80. I mean, I'm, I'm up close and personal with him in, in, in the scenes in the film. He does not look 80 at all. And he's, he's just fit. He does a few stunts he does himself. In the morning in Pinewood, when he arrives at stage two at Pinewood for the filming, he drives, you know those golf buggies? Yeah. Yes. So we'll be standing outside just relaxing before we go inside. You know, some of my co-stars will have a cigarette, you know, and I'm standing outside chilling out with them. And we hear this screeching noise. <laughs> and we look around, what's that screeching noise? And Harrison Ford is in a golf buggy driving himself and he screeches right up to us and just breaks in oh time. Gosh. Doing a handbrake yeah. Didn't he crash a plane? He did. <laughs> That's I'm not sure right. I'd trust him in a... That's right. I mean, he stopped sort of just right in front of us and I was like, Harrison, thanks for not running me over. <laughs> you know. Well, wow, um, be interested to see how the kids, when, the, when the, the film's on general release, which it is from the weekend, how they all react in, in the classroom to you. Oh, they, they'll be but, so excited. Um, but you're their hero, Mohammed Kamal. Thank you very much indeed. Thank thanks you. for telling us the story. Thanks for inviting me on. We should a bit of an orange, incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> sort of for you.